It's September 9th, 2024, and there she blows, quite literally. Look at that thing spinning around down there in the Gulf of Mexico, just soaking up all of the ocean heat content that we've been hooting and hollering about. We finally got ourselves a real tropical threat out here in the Gulf of Mexico. This is Tropical Cyclone 6, and as you can tell, we've got a lot of convective towers going up around the center of circulation. It's a strengthening tropical system, and it's going to continue to strengthen as it heads straight for the United States. Here's the latest from the National Hurricane Center. Currently, Tropical Cyclone 6 has 50 mile per hour sustained winds, and it's moving north-northwest at 5 miles per hour. This is going to be a tropical storm more than likely by the time you're watching this video. It's going to be Tropical Storm Francine, and then we expect it to become Hurricane Francine early Wednesday morning, around 1 a.m. Around 1 p.m. Wednesday, it's going to be getting close to Category 2 status, more than likely, as it gets very, very close to the Louisiana border. And then sometime between 1 p.m. Wednesday and 1 a.m. Thursday, likely late in the evening on Wednesday, this thing's going to make landfall in Louisiana somewhere. All right. Now, it could be as far west as extreme eastern Texas. It could be as far east as extreme southwestern, that, that little tip part of Mississippi, but more than likely it's going to be somewhere in south central Louisiana where we see a landfall from Hurricane Francine. And then from there, this thing's going to rocket up the Mississippi River up into the upper Midwest, and a lot of us are going to see some storms and some rain as a result of this thing. But before we talk too much about the inland effects here, let's go ahead and talk about the hurricane. Like, how strong is this thing going to get? What's it going to be like when it hits land here, when it makes landfall? Well, very quickly, it's going to go from a tropical cyclone a tropical storm to a hurricane. It's going to undergo not necessarily rapid intensification, but something very close to that as it enters an extremely favorable environment for cyclogenesis and, and just the strengthening of hurricanes, mostly because of the ocean heat content and the sea surface temperatures out here. So very quickly, this thing is going to go category one, category two strength out here in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. It wouldn't surprise me at all if we even saw this thing eventually flirt with category three status. However, this model, the HFSA, and pretty much every other model, does start to weaken the storm a little bit right before it makes landfall. Notice how we've got maximum winds uh, around 100 miles per hour here on Wednesday, September 11th, early in the morning. And then by the time this is making landfall in Louisiana, maximum winds are closer to 70 to 80 mile per hour, which is still, it's a very strong storm. It's still a, a hurricane, but we're not looking at the trend right now, at least in my opinion, where we see intensification all the way up until landfall. It does look like there's going to be a moment of decreased intensity right before it makes landfall. So it really all comes down to the next 48 hours. They're super critical, right? How strong this thing gets over the next 48 hours is going to determine how much of an impact this is going to have on the coast because it is going to drop off a little bit right before it makes landfall. So if only ever makes it to category one status, it may make landfall as a tropical storm. You understand what I'm saying? But if it gets up to category three or higher, this could make landfall as a pretty intense category one or category two. So that's one of the main things that I'm watching right now. This is another very good model for tracking hurricanes, the HAFSB. This actually shows maximum winds around 115 miles per hour early in the morning on Wednesday. It's a little bit slower, allows for more time over the Gulf of Mexico. But still, even though this flirts with category three status, it makes landfall with winds around 80 miles per hour. So we're looking at pretty much every model doing this, all right? We, we see it get really strong, and then it weakens right before it hits Louisiana. And if you're wondering why that is, uh, something that we talk about a lot here on the channel during hurricane season is wind shear, okay? And that's what we're looking at on this map. This is showing wind shear where we've got varying winds with height. This stuff is like kryptonite for hurricanes, all right? Hurricanes are little babies. They can't stand it. They have to have the perfect little environment to thrive. And if you throw, like if, if you throw a tiny little gust of wind in the wrong direction in the upper levels at a hurricane, it completely falls apart. And we've got more than a gust of wind going on down here in the deep south, okay? We've got an incredible amount of wind shear, and this hurricane is going to get caught up in that, and that's likely what's going to cause it to weaken upon approach to the coast, despite the fact that everything else is perfectly set up for a strong hurricane here. So that wind shear is going to kind of absorb our hurricane, and it's going to fall apart. It's still going to be a very 
very strong storm, though. I just, I really don't think that we have to worry about that rapid intensification right up until landfall, like we have with a lot of the recent hurricanes that we've covered. Regardless, life-threatening storm surge, strong winds, power outages, flash flooding, all that stuff's going to be on the table here in uh, portions of Louisiana, maybe even over into southern Mississippi as well. Once this makes landfall, it's not over. This is going to continue to go up the Mississippi River once again, and it's going to cause some strong storms, maybe some severe weather in the deep south, and some flash flooding here. A lot of these places are desperately in need of some rain. Uh, in fact, the low pressure center is going to be right over Memphis on Friday, early in the morning, and this is going to be dumping well over a couple inches of rain in the Memphis area and surrounding areas, and I know that you guys uh, can't wait for that. But some of the rain might fall so quickly that uh, it's, it becomes a little bit of a problem. In fact, between Jackson, Mississippi and Lake Charles, it wouldn't be out of the question to see four to six inches of rain. Some places between Lake Charles and New Orleans could see up to a foot of rain in a very short period of time. Even up there a little bit farther north between Little Rock and Memphis, for example, some of those places will get more than four inches of rain in a day or less. Uh, so that could definitely lead to some flash flooding problems, even though we are in need of some rain in, in a lot of these places. And that's why we've got a moderate risk of excessive rainfall and flash flooding in the Lake Charles area down into southwestern portions of Mississippi and a slight risk all the way up the Mississippi River and mid-Mississippi River Valley up into the boot heel of Missouri as well. So you guys get ready. If you live in a flood prone area and you live anywhere in the yellow or especially the red zones, make sure you watch those creeks and streams and rivers as uh, we're going to see a lot of water coming out of Francine. And I tell you what, it's not just Francine that's going to be causing a sink. We've got other things to talk about out here in the Dagon Ocean as well. We've got two areas of interest plumb way out in the main development region that is kind of being overshadowed right now by Tropical Cyclone 6. So there's two more storms forming out here, possibly two more hurricanes uh, that we will eventually be talking about uh, probably around the time that we stop talking about Francine. So keep that in mind. The seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center continues to show several hot spots that we need to be looking at. The good news is, for the most part, a lot of the current modeling suggests that these storms are not going to be a problem for land. A lot of these are curving the uh, storm out to sea, which is, we love to see that. However, we've seen this time and time again, where in the beginning, you'll get this look and something changes and all it takes is a slight variation in the projected path here. And then we've got a storm going into the Caribbean or a storm that kind of escapes that trough and, and doesn't get sucked up to the north. And now we've got to be concerned about the East Coast. I'm not necessarily letting my guard down with this storm or any of the other waves that are coming off of Africa. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on these. But obviously the main focus right now is going to be Francine in the Gulf of Mexico. As far as inland forecasts go, nothing is really changing outside of what we've already been talking about on the channel. We're going to go through some roller coaster patterns here where a lot of us are cool this morning. A lot of us are freezing to death. I know I was. It's daggone cool out there for a lot of us. But that's going to change. A lot of people who have been experiencing this cool down, now the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook is kind of flipping on us and we're going to get right back into the, the heat. We're going to be much above average in the Great Lakes region, up into the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, that area, and we're going to get down below average in the West. Uh, this has been one of the hottest and most humid summers in Southern California's recent memory, and there's going to be a shock to the system there with some very much below average temperatures over the next week or so. This is interesting. It's going to cause some problems in the more distant future, but for now, it's just another part of the weather story where the headline is still Hurricane Francine. If Hurricane Francine makes landfall as a category one hurricane or higher. We are going to be live here on this channel. It looks like that's probably going to happen on Wednesday. That's why we have a 60% probability of doing a live stream on Wednesday. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on. Of course, we'll have storm chasers out there, live cameras, radar, all that good stuff. And we'll just hang out and hopefully have a good time in an uneventful tropical system. But of course, with every hurricane, there's going to be problems. There's going to be tornadoes, probably. There's going to be stuff that we have to get serious about about. So uh, that's why we're going to be there. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Obviously, if you have interests along the coast, you need to be taking this time to listen to your local officials about potential evacuations. Storm surge is a big problem in a lot of these areas where the storm is going to make landfall. And of course, flash flooding is going to be a big deal uh, with some of these storms. So um, keep that in mind. And um, hopefully this thing doesn't 
blow up like a lot of other storms have recently. And uh, we'll, we'll get past this one and we'll just start thinking about the next one. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.